Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophynet the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Bioshock Infinite. We're still in the back of the Blue Ribbon uh, restaurant, still, uh, well, running away from the authorities. The and there we go. We're trying to make our way... Yeah, indeed. Because we're still making our way over there to Monument Island with that lovely statue on top of it. And we're being chased by a few uh, airships. But first, let's uh, have an introduction to the Skyhook. Damn hook must be magnetized. Yeah, something like that. Let's attach over there. And then over there. And let's jump down. Because there's a few things here, if I'm not mistaken. So this way we can uh, make our way through the skies without too much trouble. There we go. Some machine gun ammo isn't there. Hmm. Actually doubting at the moment, but I think it's a bit further on. And then you can actually kill someone from a skyline as well, like this. And then they get dropped off the roof. There we go, machine gun and some ammo. I'm gonna switch back to the other one. If I remember how to do that. Yeah, there we go. Because the pistol is a bit more effective at the moment, especially since it's the golden pistol that we're uh, using. Um, but I think we can actually use possession to swap it to, well, take control of a unit over there. And then they start uh, killing off each other. Did they actually manage to kill him? Reload, buddy. So now the shield, since we're buffed. The shield takes care of most of the damage we're gonna receive. And if we wait for a second, that shield actually comes back, which is uh, amazing. Because that's gonna help us out really, really a lot. Because well, most of the damage we're gonna get will be soaked up by the shield. And especially since we're uh, playing this on hard. I'm gonna take out the... Uh, the third over there, if I can actually hit it. There we go. I hear one other behind me. Maybe a good time to start using Devil's Kiss. Doesn't seem like there's anybody here. They sound like they're behind me, but they might be on top of the roofs as well. Let's just take a quick look around. See if I didn't miss any loot. I don't think there's that much over here machine gun that we picked up automatically apparently and then this guy we uh, we took over with possession then in here salts always useful a bit of health and a lot of these crates nothing in there only health items so let's just slowly make our way I think there's one over there yeah Almost had him there. So the violin uh, notes are always uh, happening on headshots. A real pistol. There we go. And that's a trophy. A real pistol. So that's 25 kills with the pistol. Just gonna stay over here until my shield has returned. Just taking a look around because I do want to take care of that turret. I can't really see at the moment. Probably on the gunship. There we go. Just in time for our shield to deplete. You will. Just gonna make my way through here. Don't mind me. So oil snakes work the same way as they always have them. Oh, damn it. Uh, don't really need the salts. There we go, oil slick on fire. And there we go, I think. There's a few of them in my back, apparently. Have to be careful. I think, yeah, I do need to reload that. Is this thing gold as well? Looks like it. 
passionately reciprocated, which is the trophy for getting uh, 150 machine gun kills. Now, there's something interesting here. I can actually smack this window over here. There we go. And get inside of the building. Now, we're in the Lansdow residence. There's a few things here, but most important of all, there's a big chest around here that we can't open yet, sadly. Uh, we're full on everything, but there's a purse. Because as uh, I said before, the more money, the better. And I think, I thought there was one over here, but apparently not. Maybe a bit further in the building. Can't actually go down, because this is a locked off area. You can't go through this any other way than through the window, if I'm not mistaken, unless they change that. Um, but I don't think so. Yeah, there's a chest. So that's the chest we can't open just yet, because it's locked and we need a key. So uh, find the key that fits the lock. The annoying thing about that is it's going to be a while before we uh, can get back to that. There's a few other things here, including a voxophone. Let's listen to that. Byron Cotswold. Otis works up at the lodge part-time. He took this box from one of their secret ceremonies. And I know for sure there is something dear inside. Problem is, Otis is more fool than not. He didn't bother to also secure a key from the Feathered Brothers to open the damn thing. So there we go. He got the chest from the Feathered Brothers. Now we have a civilian that doesn't seem to want to hurt us. So I'm going to leave him alive for now because he doesn't really... Uh, seem that angry at me but there's a silver bar which i will gladly take because they're they are worth a lot of money and then of course the silver eagle purse he doesn't seem to mind me taking all his money which is going to change later on in the game but for now he seems perfectly fine with me stealing everything from his house but uh, yeah see you later see you later so uh byron got the chest from the feathered brothers not uh, indicating anything else about these uh, feathered brothers but uh, he also indicates that the, there wasn't a key provided for him by the guy that gave him the chest so yeah he still has a bit of a problem because the chest is of course locked now we're gonna go further here because we're gonna come into a more residential area is there anything here maybe a few things in the box especially money uh, anything else? Thought I saw something, but nope. Let's get back to the hook and then go down. Anybody here? I don't think there is anybody here. Aside from the bit of uh, fruit on the tray and a few silver eagles. Is there anything else? Nope. Nope. Ah, uh, nope. Okay, let's go inside. Something in the mailbox? I think these are usually empty, but... Okay... A meeting of the Columbia Friends of the Negro Society. Until the Negro is equal, none of us are equal. So that is strange, don't you think? Because most of the people we've seen so far were extreme racists. But these, uh, this, these people have a poster, well, talking about the, the Columbia Friends of the Negro Society. And there we go, we have a civilian already discussing the very same predicament as well. So let's go further because these guys seem to be very friendly. Violence is not a foregone conclusion. Hello. Ah! Oh. Tim, the one they're after. Go. They're looking for you. Oh, well, thank you. We're in need of your assistance. They're here. Shh. Keep your voice down. So they want to help us. So if we go past them, he's going to open up the door and uh, let the good officers in and we can hide around this area. I'm just right. going to try and check everything uh, over here because he's actually protecting us. There's a few sick people here as well that though that a lovely couple is taking care of. Um, but yeah, they don't want anything to do with the officers and they don't seem to mind for now. I think, yeah, there's another door over here. But for now, we have the advantage. More ammo and another Devil's Kiss bottle, just in case you missed all the other bottles we found so far. Uh, let's search the, the back for more money. That's pretty much it. So now, I can actually crouch. Yeah, let's open up the door and see what we have here. There we go. Kind of got the element of surprise out of the way. But now... 
just gonna try and stay out of the way there. Oh, I think there's people in my sides. There we go. And as you can see, there's a lot more enemies in this game than uh, Bioshock 1 and 2, because we're pretty much at the beginning of the game still. And they're a lot more varied than you're uh, used to. Seriously? Gonna have to move a bit. Waiting for the shield. Gonna have to be careful here. Jesus. There we go. So eventually he's going into a suicide rage. And then you just have to keep him at bay for the time he's still uh, there. Now I need to take care of that hope over there. There we go. And now we're almost out of bullets, so let's swap to the machine gun. Where's the fireman? There he is. He usually has a lot of stuff. And the propaganda going all around. I think that's it, yeah. The music stopped, so that means... All the enemies are dead. All the enemies are dead. So give me a second, I'm gonna scrounge the area, pick up a few uh, voxophones as well. So see you guys uh, at the next voxophone. So, first off, we have a kinetoscope danger on all sides. We must be ever vigilant. And everybody's looking out against the scourge of the vox. So the vox are kind of the rebels. Stand alert for Columbia. Fan. There we go. So they're warning us about the Vox. Well, not us, but the general population about the Vox Populi, because they're they're evil rebels. Haven't we heard that before? Let's search around, and I'll get back to you. So on this lovely display, the Wild West show by uh, Preston Downs, uh, there's another Voxophone. So let's listen to Mr. Downs' own words. Gomshot came by the wagon at dawn. Man was just. He's just transfixed by my trophy scalps. Asked about the white ones there. I said, well, sir, if your quarry dwells in the jungle and beds down with the local color, why split hairs? <laughs> Not a chuckle out of him. Either he ain't seen a man go native or maybe, maybe too many. Anyhow, now he's got me hunting down this Daisy Fitzroy. Hope he don't expect me to stuff in mount her. <laughs> yeah. So this game Hunter of Legends was tasked by uh, the Prophet to hunt down Daisy Fitzroy, the leader of the uh, Vox Populi. Uh, and I have a feeling we're going to hear from him a bit more to see if he was actually successful in killing Lady Fitzroy. Now let's go on, because over here we have a very, very ominous building. Artemis Patria Nostra Defendere. We must defend our homeland. Uh, a big eye with four swords and a lot of a lot more swords and when we get closer there's a lot of fog and yeah this place is just generally incredibly creepy a lot of crows and Comstock fights the serpent of nations against the uh, the, the Chinese the Chinese boxers we saw that uh, kinetoscope and there's a statue uh, memorializing that just getting the salts here and then let's head into the building, because this is of course the building that was referred to by the uh, Voxophone by Byron in the uh, first home we entered, where we found the chest that he couldn't find the key that was uh, linked to the chest, well, provided by his feathered brothers, so uh, I think we're at the right place, the Order of the Raven. And there's a lot of, lot of uh, ravens inside of the building as well, a lot of, uh, yeah, there's not, there's something not not very good going on here. Six Semper Tyrannis, you might uh, remember that if you know a bit of history, because John Wags Booth was of course the man that tried to kill President Abraham Lincoln and uh, he is actually revered in this by these uh, people. Just gonna take the pistol because uh, yeah these guys are not really friendly. 
Because when we go over here, it seems like, like normal people, right? Just really, really normal people with a lot of crows hanging around. But if we, once we get noticed by these people, they start to get a bit more aggressive. So let's take care of these guys and clear out the building first. There we go. A few more headshots. There we go. A few uh, brothers of the raven as well. This is an interesting painting. So that's Abraham Lincoln over there with demon eyes and demon horns. And of course, uh, John Wag's booth being, uh, well, displayed as a hero, a saint. Which is, of course, turning around history a bit. But yeah, this... I mean, this table alone, it's filled with food, but then shit on by all the birds. Which isn't very good. Let's go with Devil's Kiss again. And take a look around now that we've killed most of them. Um, I think... Is there a foxophone over here? Ooh, what the hell is that supposed to be? Is, is that a rabbit? A dead rabbit? Ugh. Okay then. Just moving a bit further here, because I think there's a foxophone around here somewhere. And a bit of music. I think the guys from over here ran to the other area. So this is the bar. And again, John Wilkes... No, is that Washington? That looks like Washington. And Abraham Lincoln on the left. So let's take the foxophone over here and listen to another one of Comstock's. to build a new Eden, they did so without hesitation. For 85 years, they prepared the way of the Lord. But when the great apostate came, he brought war with him, and the fields of Eden were soaked with the blood of brothers. The only emancipation he had to offer was death. So there we go, that's the first indication of how long it actually took to uh, create Colombia. So 85 years the nation built on uh, the new Eden, as he said it. And uh, yeah, he was... Uh, that's how long it took them to make Colombia, which is not that long if you consider everything. Um, but then everything changed because of the war with the Chinese boxers, which Colombia helped, but uh, it also showed America to be afraid of their own creation. But, big, uh, big door, big uh, illuminated door, let's go through. God and country, for God and country. The prophet led us into Peiti, where we demonstrated to the Sodom below the true mission our founders had given us. And when the men and hypocrites of Washington betrayed him, our prophet did not heal. He did not come crawling for their forgiveness. Like our fathers broke with the great apostate. Our prophet broke with these so-called patriots. And today is the day we celebrate this society. Yeah, these guys are really, really creepy. There we go, so we uh, used a Devil's Kiss trap, which is a bit bigger than a normal uh, normal effect, to uh, clear up most of the enemies already, which is good. Always like a bit of an advantage. Gonna have to make my way downstairs. Uh, more salts. I think they're trying to fire at me, but they're kind of thingy. Because I think it's just the main... Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe you should... Jesus Christ. Yeah, there we go. I should learn to aim. There, there's one. And he can aim. Ooh, that was straight in the face. I can aim as well. There's one on the upside. Upstairs again. Surrender. There we go. Where's the big guy? So the big guy disappeared. We couldn't damage him. But the big uh, leader guy with the coffin on his back and uh, the crows all around him, he's uh, he's missing. So he just got away and he didn't want to fight us, which is, which is a bit weird. But uh, so be it. So those guys look a bit charred. 
because yeah, we killed five of them with one uh, throw. But here, another voxophone. Maybe this can, uh, well, illuminate us as well. What exactly was the great emancipator emancipating the Negro from? From his daily bread, from the nobility of honest work, from wealthy patrons who sponsored them from cradle to grave, from clothing and shelter. And what have they done with their freedom? Why, go to Finkton and you shall find out. No animal is born free, except the white man. And it is our burden to care for the rest of creation. No man is born free but the white man. So yeah, again, very racist statements. But over here is something very interesting. So we have the book. Don't really care about the book. But of course this is the key to the chest. Find the lock that fits the key, which is uh, very clear because we know where that is. So let's pick up the infusion and have... Normally that would be your first upgrade if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, at the moment that's not the case. Because that's I think Just our sixth upgrade order. already. Uh, now, give me a second and I'm gonna return to the chest so we can open that and I'll get back to you when we find it. So back in the Lansdowne residence, we're right next to the key, let's unlock it with the key, what? The key, right next to the chest, let's unlock it with the key. And we have yet another infusion, which is gonna go towards shields again, because shields are the most important thing in this game. Well, to me at least. Um, so there we go. Chest unlocked, only an infusion and a salt box and of course a health kit, but uh, we don't have any use for those. So let's get back to uh, the Order of the Raven. So another great improvement that Bioshock Infinite has towards its uh, predecessors is that it does is really, really um, smart with respawns. It doesn't overtly respawn enemies as Bioshock 1 and 2 did. So you can, well, quite easily uh, backtrack. Now, by many to be Vox Populi, began his terrible rampage. Trouble began almost instantly. Full of wrath and bent on harm, the anarchist maliciously wounded several Colombian peacemakers, before then arming himself and firing into an assemblage of virtuous fair goers. As of this hour, he is considered wholly responsible for causing at least eight God fearing Colombians to meet their maker in heaven. I think our kill count is a lot higher already. Brimming with danger and evil intent, and we implore you not to tempt ruination by facing him without aid of Colombia's finest. Now, back to the music. Back to the music, yeah. He says while we're looking at a bloody crow who killed, probably killed God knows what. I think if I look intently, I might find another Voxophone. I thought there was one around here. But I might be completely mistaken, because there's a lot of these uh, cubicle areas in this game. So let's just continue on and into our first elevator. There we go. Elevator. Push. Try and push but And that shut up the radio. Interestingly enough. So yeah, this machine gun is also gold. Wonder if that's just a golden finish or if the weapons actually do more damage. Oh, yeah, okay. That was... I wanted to reload, but for some reason, even though I wasn't looking at the button, it pushed the... Booker pushed the button. So there we have their, uh, well, their tagline again. I've uh, explained you that already, so it's auto-saving, which is good, because now... Is that... that's just a dollar bill machine, right? So this is just gonna give me money... Yay! Jumping for joy. That wasn't a lot, was it? Could buy some stuff, but I'm not going to. Let's just enter this room. Cause this is this is like their auditorium. So they're uh, watching watching little movies over here. There's a few things over here as well that's that are really interesting. So let's take a look around. Cause first things first, all the money from the table, because there's a lot of it. Uh, more bullets. Thank you very much. Anything else? No. But then there's this mysterious bookcase, of course, which isn't all that mysterious, because we can move it. We can move it away. And normally, this place should have your first piece of gear. Um, not for us, of course, because we have all the stuff, but Headmaster increases critical hit damage by 50%. Let's, uh, instead of Ghost Soldiers, so let's equip that immediately, because uh, Headmaster is really, really good. A flat 50% increase to critical hit 
damage. So uh, headshots will do a lot more damage than they did before. So they had somebody here and they apparently tortured him as well. Not much else to go uh, go on here, but uh, it's that. And there's another little golden cage in here as well. But that's about it. There's not much here aside from the piece of gear. And then we can actually go at the other side here as well. And this might be the area I had in mind previously, if I'm not mistaken. Which I still might be. Which I still might be. Machine gun ammo. There we go, the Fox of Fun. My first zealot. Sweet mother of Columbia. Why do we worship three symbols in your memory? We worship the sword. So that we might avenge you. We worship the raven so that we might cover the city with eyes. We worship the coffin, because it symbolizes the weight of our faith. So the Brotherhood of the Raven uh, worship three different symbols than most people in Colombia. So they have the sword, but instead of the key and the scroll, they go for the coffin and um, the raven, the raven obviously, the raven, so they can cover the world with eyes. But, now that we know that lovely fact, I just want to go back to my family. so I think we know who the prisoner is that was uh, seated over there, that had that bloody uh, stool over there. Let's open the door and see if we can't help this Chinese prisoner. Here we go. And yeah, there goes the first zealot, so he, that's the guy that uh, we heard before. And yeah, he has control over the ravens, over the crows, and he kind of murdered the fuck out of his Chinese prisoner. But let's be careful here. I'm gonna try and set this up rather nicely. So I'm gonna pulse a few traps around here. And let's try to, uh, well, let's turn this off. Can I turn this off? Nope, can't turn this off. So let's just go through the middle. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. Guide me, Lady Jesus, Jesus. So this guy can turn into a flock of ravens. And there we go. Taken care of. What's this? Some new kind of vigor? Yes, indeed. So pick up murder of crows. Because this thing is not creepy at all. Drink up, Booker. Ow. And another little animation. And there's the raven. So now we also have control of crows. There we go. A murder of crows. So now we can swap between our two most recently used um, figures. There we go, murder of crows. And they actually kill, uh, do quite a bit of damage as well. There we go. There's another one alive, apparently. There we go. And they do actually quite a bit of damage, but you do have to be careful because you can't use them all that much. Which is a bit of a problem with in Bioshock Infinite. You, you have a lot of these very cool powers, especially the newer ones. But you can't use them all that much because there's four charges for most of them. And I think Devil's Kiss has a bit more, so five at the moment. Um, but yeah, that doesn't allow you to use them all that much. Which isn't always su such a big problem, but it kind of limits the use of uh, those powers. You can't really experiment all that much with them. So uh, this is a vending machine that was in repair and looks like a, a ticket booth. But let's look at the gear. Burning Halo. 70% chance that the melee target is set ablaze. Victims take 300 damage over 4 seconds. Let's check that out. That's a swap for... Hmm... When we find voxophones, we pr we get extra money. Let's keep that for now. So let's just take the gear. Because we can swap that out later on. We can always swap that out from the menu. So uh, not that big of a problem. The false shepherd, this anarchist, is either a mulatto dwarf or a French man with a missing left eye. No more than four foot and nine inches. 
there we go, not really looking for us now, are they? Because uh, the description is really, really bad. Because, of course, people start to panic, there's mass panic, and they start to tell all sorts of things. Monument Island from that station. So indeed, so there's a, a station over there, and we need to get to Monument Island. If you want to see where we were before, I think I can actually, can I? Yeah, there we go. We were pretty close to Monument Island before, because right over there, it should be... Huh, that's weird, because we could see that station from when we were attacked the very first time, where we uh, drew number 77. But over here, there's another telescope. I don't think there's anything special about this one. If I'm not mistaken, I can see down. But that's pretty much it. Unless you guys can tell me more, because I don't know everything about this game, of course. But I don't think there's anything uh, special around here. So yeah, let's exit the telescope again, because that actually counts for the sightseer trophy as well. Um, okay, we're going down. Oh no, we're going down. There we go, up and over. Let's attach to the hook. Um, let's check out the boxes while we're here. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Let's attach again. And then we can enter this building, because this has a quite, a, quite a few interesting tidbits of information as well. Just a, a funny a funny thing to see. Uh, so let's go down, because when we were talking about the fact that people misdescribe us... So there we go, they're making a portrait of us, but we don't look anything like that. Red and curly? He looked Irish to me. Yes, like that. Okay, what about his temperament? Oh, he was certainly an anarchist. You can spot them anywhere, you know. Oh, I know. That's a close likeness. So now we can actually try and kill someone here, because there's a few items in there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I, yeah, these are innocent people, but... At this point, they're all dirty racists. And I don't don't think all of them do something. Because these guys are actually mad at us, but... That, was that behind me? That was weird. Is there another one in here, or are those just the civilians? That passionately reciprocated. 10 out of 150. So that's our 10th uh, uh, kill with the... Um, with the machine gun. So look at that. That's that doesn't look anything like us. Not not one bit. So what were you thinking, woman? I'm gonna kill her because of course she didn't do anything to me. Not that the cop did, but she's not gonna do anything to me either way. Uh, I'm sorry if that was your husband. I just shot the last one. Is there anything here? I might have killed them uh, for no reason, uh, and I think I just did because there's nothing here. I thought there was something here. But I do, I do apologize. I really, really do apologize. Let's get back up. Just to run away from the scene of the crime. Um, now, I don't think there's anything else here. So let's go back outside and continue our uh, rampage through Colombia. That's attached on the hook over there. Then that one over there. And that man's face over there. Surrender. Hello? Oh, that was about it. Two guards. That was sad. That was really sad. But apparently the people don't mind because they're still happily firing fireworks off in the distance. Which, uh, well, indicates to me that I'm not doing something wrong, actually. So, uh, let's head into the station. And maybe before we enter the station, I'm going to take a little break so you guys can uh, well, take a breath. Uh, freshen up your mind and come back to me in two days when we get to the next part. Uh, so thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And when we get back, we're gonna go to Monument Island and see if we can find the girl we're here for. So thanks again enormously for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.